Shadow of the Conqueror, Enemies of Self is the graphic novel adaptation from the novel of a similar name, Shadow of the Conqueror, by Shad M. Brooks. This graphic novel was brought to life by Mike S. Miller and various other artists who helped to work on the project. I would strongly recommend all of you go down in the link in the description below and click on the Indiegogo link because it's only live for a few more days, people. Let's get into it. Before we get into this review, I would like all of my subscribers to know and everybody who may be checking out this channel who is not a subscriber that I was sent a copy of this to review. So I want everybody to know that I will be doing my best, even though it was sent to me to review, to leave my personal biases and my fanboyness out of this. When it was sent to me and I was let know that I could review Shadow of the Conqueror's Enemies of Self, I turned my analytical mind on and my fanboy brain off. So hopefully you guys enjoy this review, and without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to A Drink With Crazy. My name is Royce, and I am so excited to bring you the spoiler-free review for The Shadow of the Conqueror, Enemies of Self, which is the first part in the graphic novel adaptation from Shad M. Brooks, who originally wrote Shadow of the Conqueror. Now, between Shad himself... Mike S. Miller, and a collection of other artists for different covers. They have done some absolutely fantastic work, and I am here to tell you all about it. In a non-spoiler way, that is. So the first thing that struck me, obviously I don't have the physical book here, they're not even out yet. So unlike the Ripperverse Isom review, I can't comment on the book, the paper, and all that stuff, but what I can comment on is the artwork. And the first thing that I really noticed is I thought that there was some solid black lining here. I really, really enjoyed the solid black lining, how it accentuated the characters, the way that it was used um, to make sure that things were absolutely separated. They did use a for the most part, what I thought to be, and I'm not an artist, so if I'm getting some of these terms wrong, I apologize. I'm just a reader and a fan. But they used a somewhat neutral color palette where they used more of the brighter tones and brighter colors and more eye-catching colors to accentuate certain parts of characters, which I thought was a very, very good decision. It makes you understand that these characters are definitely distinguishable from each other in smaller ways such as hair color or maybe uh, uh <laughs> hair color maybe some scars here and there and so on and so forth so overall i thought that the color palette actually really matched the the world and the tone that they were going for which is really nice to see and my notes here are kind of scatterbrained and they're going to jump around a little bit but just follow me on this journey because i, I really really like this the story was told mostly through an internal monologue of our main character. It did a good job at going back and forth between the history of the main character and the present of the main character, while simultaneously talking about the internal struggle of the main character. There was a lot of there there was a lot involved in and and, and I, I would find it hard to tell a story with an internal monologue and not become too exposition heavy. And although there were a couple moments there where I thought, okay, they, they, the exposition's a little bit much here, uh, those were very fleeting and they passed very quickly because you were brought into the present with conversational dialogue, something that I thought they balanced fairly well between, again, the internal monologue and the conversational dialogue. Um, again, when you're doing internal monologue, it can seem expositionally heavy for a lot of writers. However, I thought that they struck a balance here that was, again, fairly good, uh, just based off of first impressions. I haven't gone back. I haven't read it again. Maybe when I read it again and I have the knowledge that I have now, kind of like when you watch a movie for the first time and you go back and watch it again, you can kind of catch all the little things. Maybe if I do that, my mind will change. So never ever think that my initial reviews are something that are set in stone because, well, life isn't set in stone, ladies and gentlemen. 
So with that being said, there was a lot of interesting things that I thought happened here. Um, one of the things is that they were able to introduce multiple characters into the story, much through internal, uh, again, that internal monologuing thing, and then going back to conversational dialogue. That was a really cool tool to use here. I felt that they reached in, grabbed something out of the toolkit, uh, thought it worked very well, and overall, I think it was pretty successful for introducing the multiple characters that they did with the backstories. Now, one thing here is that this was previously a novel that was written by Shad M. Brooks, so they do actually have that going for them, in that they have a pre-existing story that can be retold in the graphic novel form, and I believe Shad M. Brooks has gone through and, and updated his story for like the, the newer editions, more just to... Uh, suss some things out not to change the story or adapt it any differently than it actually was but to maybe clarify some things so in hindsight always being 2020 if shad m brooks had hindsight being 2020 he could bring that into his graphic novel so that is something that you could absolutely tell from the start of this there was a baseline they had a starting point they had a jumping off point they had the graphic novel that they could refer to and reference and then also the writer of that graphic novel so the story although isn't brand new in graphic novel form they were able to execute something because they had that pre-existing story and again, that's something that you can tell. It was very, very tightly told for, I mean, this scrub's personal <laughs> uh, opinion. Uh, going into the pacing of it, it was not, I, I felt it was a good medium pace. It never had anything that was very breakneck and it never was slowed down too much. It definitely had a certain pace and they had the action sequences and the story sequences laid out in such a way that you never felt like you were slowing down too much or speeding up too fast. You definitely had those moments that were more exciting. You had those moments that were more intense and then you had some funny moments, which for me was on page 17. For you, it might not be because I don't have the physical book, but for page 17, there was... <laughs> there was a character who got startled from a door opening and just what he says <laughs> just I, I I had to retain my composure but it was just the way that he said it um okay sorry I I had I actually wrote that down because I found that that one particular line was just so funny because you're coming from just intense moments and all of a sudden you just hear this person say this, you know, thing in, in, you know, in an exclamatory way. And it was just really funny. And I just felt that it broke up that m those moments of intensity. And so overall, that was that was very well done in my personal opinion. One of the things here that I do want to say is there are definitely some more, uh, Okay, so in visual sense, there are no overly adult scenes that I would say are really, really bad for younger readers. However, there are some things that are said that uh, uh, in the conversational dialogue that would definitely be more on the adult side. And I'm not talking about cursing or bad language. In fact, they created their own cursing language. Um in this world which i felt was very good and i felt that shad did a good job with that uh being you know staying true to you know his his rule in life of you know not cursing personally so that was that was something that i felt was very interesting um the the violence in the book itself i thought was expertly well um illustrated the the depictions of violence and one of them hits you very early on and my good lord it is wow i just i thought that that pay i mean it, that was it, it was and it's early on in the book and it just kind of it, it did make me just go wow this this is really good that was probably my favorite artistic page in the book was the one of the first early moments of violence that you see um it really did a lot to show the character it really did a lot to show the talent of the people who are coloring 
and who are uh, penciling all of this. Uh, so that was something that definitely stood out to me and needed to be talked about here. Um, the rest of the there, there's not much other violence in uh, uh, in the book, but for that which is there, I wouldn't say that that it's anything that would uh, you know I would necessarily keep away from children. That first one though, that first one though was a little brutal. So <laughs> um, going again, doing my best to stay away from spoilers here. The one thing that I will say, and I want to make sure that I've covered... Oh, no, 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 no. Before I get to that, sorry, I, I have to do this one. There is a philosophy here in this story I really, really enjoyed. And it is something that I just happened upon as a younger man. All of us may be haunted by the sins of our past. And through those sins, we sit there and wonder if we could ever atone for them. And... We may have used some of those things in our past to hurt other people or be a, you know, be just a genuine horrible person. But in our, I, I, what this philosophy goes for is it says, but in our remorse for what we have done, we can use some of the things that we have picked up in our bad habits, such as maybe people could be. Uh, some things that stand out to me, manipulators, you know, soldiers, you know, soldiers, they were, they were made and they were designed and they were taught to kill and be on the battlefield. Well, killing indiscriminately and ruthlessly may be a bad thing, but killing for the defense of others is a very good thing. Manipulating people into your own will may be a bad thing. But yet doing your best to cause manipulations that lead people into a better future, although your manipulations in the past may have been bad, you might be able to seek some sort of redemption by helping those to kind of get out of their own way. If that makes any sense, it's, it's kind of the don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If you seek redemption in your life, if you were really, really good at doing bad things in life, by a specific method of doing that bad thing, you might actually be able to use that specific method for the good of others. And I really like that they touched on that philosophy here. I don't see a lot of stories go into that, especially in the modern day. And that's something that really spoke to me. And that's something that I caught on to really, really early on. And I liked that they did that. I liked that in the search for self-improvement, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater right? You figure out what was good about yourself, what was bad about yourself, the methods of what you use to be good about yourself that may not be necessarily be the best, and you might have to get rid of some of those. And then the methods that you use to be the bad part of yourself that you go, well, wait a minute, but, but that could be, but that, but that thing that I use to be bad could actually be really good. And you flip flop it. And it's all in the quest to just become a better person and right the wrongs of your past. Although, you may still have to face those demons as much as you do not want to. The final thing that I will say, and this is my one critique that I have, and again, it jumped out at me. Anything that jumps out at me, I want to make sure people know. Usually when things like this jump out at me, it's definitely more of uh, a subjective take versus an objective take. So, subjectively speaking, I felt that the main character and his interaction with the magic system in the world uh, came on a little bit too quickly, and it was somewhat jarring for me. Uh, myself, personally, I would have enjoyed it much more had the main character and his interactions with the magic system been introduced a little more softly, a little more spread out, or a little bit more... Mm, well, I won't. I, I, hopefully, you get what I'm saying. I can't go into it more without getting into spoilers, and I promised that I would not do any spoilers. So, overall, my final thoughts on this: it was well told from start to finish. The pacing was great. The animation, or not the animation? Can you tell I'm a movie and <laughs> I'm a movie and TV guy? That. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, the artist depictions were absolutely fit uh, the storytelling and the pacing. The art overall, I thought, was absolutely fantastic for uh, a medieval type of world that they were telling. And again, uh, using the neutral color palette of the world around you, uh, or a, a, a more earth tone, well, not earth tone. I'm gonna go with neutral. I'm gonna say a neutral color palette. Using more of a neutral color palette to use uh, the brighter color palettes to accentuate the important parts of either a person, a uh, more distinguishable, distinguishable part of a person or even objects in the land that are of importance you notice that their colors were different i felt that that was a really good choice there um i do i do wish that the magic system was introduced a little bit more slowly to get you into it it was a little jarring for me when i saw it um and that was something that I kept thinking about as we went back to it. There was a character, however, who was introduced. And when he talked about his interactions with the magic system, um, I was it maybe because I had already been introduced to it in that jarring way. I was definitely more accepting of this other person uh, and, and, and his use and talk about the magic system. So... There's a little bit of give and take there on that one, and I definitely think they might have needed to have a little bit more give in the beginning on it. But overall, I think it was a really good, to, especially because I know that they're going to break down this the, the, the novel into several books, and I believe they're doing two to three more. So Bluetooth for those of you who are absolutely excited about what Chad M. Brooks is doing and what Mike S. Miller has helped him do, I think this is going to be a good read for all of you, especially for those of you who have already read the novel itself and would like to see it in graphic novel form. Well, I guess I, I haven't read it, but I would hope that you read it. I would, I would hope that you check it out because I definitely had a good time for it. The only thing that this made me really, really, really wish is that I could buy the leather bound edition today. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not quite a thing because I the only thing that this review is missing is holding the book in my hands and physically being able to tell you guys about the quality of the thing that I'm holding in my hands. That's the only thing that I wish I could do here. But I guess I'm going to have to shell up <laughs> some pennies for that one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review of Shadow of the Conquerors. Shadow of the Conqueror. Enemy of Self by Shad M. Brooks and Mike S. Miller. Thank you all so much for being here on A Drink With Crazy, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Don't forget to go down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and if you guys so choose, comment down below and let me know what you think. I enjoy interacting with everybody down there. Also, I would absolutely love it if you guys would stick around until Friday night. Friday night, we are doing Friday night... Iron Age Nights, right? Iron Age Nights is essentially something that is to be the other side of the coin from Friday Night Tights. While Friday Night Tights is over there making sure that the mainstream media knows the mistakes that they have made and holding those guys accountable, we here on Iron Age Nights are here to promote some of these new creators, these Iron Age creators, these people who are bringing up the culture from the ground up. So I hope that you all come and join me on Friday night for this week's Iron Age Nights number two. So thank you all so much for checking out the channel. And until next time, cheers, everybody. Thank you all for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If you guys never want to miss a notification for the channel, go down in the link in the description and click that button to follow me and support me over on Locals. It's free to join, but that's where you can support me with money if you so choose. Also, don't forget to click those Rumble and Odyssey links so that way we can get over there and keep that growing. And until next time, cheers, everybody.